Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Framio Smart Photo Frame. The really interesting thing here is this company, Framio, claims that they're a software-based company and actually they don't really focus on the hardware. They partner with other hardware manufacturers, over 30 of them, including uh, brands such as RCA, Sylvania, other ones that you may find either on Amazon, Walmart, other retail stores, and they all come as part of the app ecosystem that's powered by Framio here. And they sell typically for around $100. This is for a 10.1 inch version. All the hardware are pretty similar. They feature roughly 8 gigs of built-in storage. They're connected using Wi-Fi to the cloud, so you can push photos over from anywhere and they will be displayed. The software is also unique because aside from sending photos over to the frame on any device, it doesn't have to be just your smartphone. If you have someone living in a different country and you want to share photos with them, they're also interactive in the sense that they can display some social elements, not only the photo, but things like comments, also a built-in speaker, and uh, on the side here we have access to ports like a micro SD card slot, although there is some, again, around 8 or 16 gigs of built-in storage. That's the power supply. It does need to be plugged in at all times. You can also use a standard micro USB to power it, however, which is nice, and also a dedicated on-off switch. Again, this one here is mostly just reference hardware, uh, but all of them will be pretty similar in terms of the system specs. Unit here is booting up for the first time. I think it's called the Rock Chip, um, is the OEM just for the reference hardware. Let's also peel off this protector covering the display. And as you saw there in that sign, it is actually running on Android. So it's just a very heavily customized um, app that's been restricted just to this simple task. So it still feels responsive, even on relatively entry level hardware. We can then proceed to the setup, which has been a customized kind of Android setup screen. We can select a language. Let's tap on English, go next. And the touchscreen here is decently responsive. We can also choose to connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. The keyboard then pops up over here. It really is just like an Android tablet. And we can hear that there is a speaker since as we tap, you can hear a little bit of a sound there in the background. The keyboard here is just the G board and supports even emojis, which is kind of interesting. But anyways, we are done. And now it's gonna go through a quick tutorial or guide of how to add people and friends that can then share content over to the frame using a generated code that you would share with them. And they should be able to do that on their mobile device. Uh, so pass on the code, uh, do this by giving it to them by text, sending a photo, and then they should be able to do it, but they have to still download the Framio app. Although that one should be just free and pretty quick to access on the Play Store or the iOS Store. So if you have kind of friends, especially, or family members, things like grandparents that live in a different city, uh, this would be a great way to share content with them, and they can share it maybe with you as well if uh, you also have a frame in your house. Interface is pretty different from other smart photo frames that we've seen in the past, which are more generic and from Shenzhen. This one here does have a bit more of a customized feel to it, especially with the notifications that you can see up top. Really reminds me of a tablet or a smartphone, kind of iOS and its theme. If we tap on this, um, it actually pops it open. It says you can also enjoy videos. So not only photos, but you can send video files as well. Let's just tap on OK and the notification disappears. So from here we can tap on either settings. Uh, this will probably change things like connecting to a different Wi-Fi network. Things like the volume can be adjusted. Indeed, this version is running on Android 6.0 Marshmallow, perfectly sufficient for just a digital photo frame. So now we can just tap to add friends and uh, this will now generate a code. The code is unique and actually has a expiry date. In this case, it's expiring on June 4th. So there is a bit of added security there. So over on our phone, we have a screen that says to send photos to the frame, ask the owner of the frame for a code. And then uh, there's basically just a quick tutorial there. It will then display the last few photos that you've been taking, your gallery, so it can read the files on your phone, access your Google Drive so that you can share media to the frame. But then I can tap on the add sign to add a new frame. Um, I have to enter the code that was displayed on the frame there. And we are successful. It says a new friend was added as this notification on the top. If I tap on this, let's see what happens. It says that we have a new friend and their name is OS Reviews. That was the name that I selected when setting up the app on the phone. I can also tap on this friend to change their permissions, do things like delete this friend or 
uh, revoke their properties of uh, being able to access it. So we can go through our photos, we can select them from our gallery or file manager, and then select the recipients. It's going to be the frame called OS Reviews in our living room. I can then tap to proceed. I can write a caption, which is the interactive part. So I'm just going to type out watermelon, and I am now ready. Select the important part, which is to adjust the orientation, so you can actually uh, change the aspect ratio of your shot. And you heard that chime, and the photo has actually been popped over. And we have the caption down below there, I received a new photo, and also it says watermelon with the emoji. So it's really fast. As long as it's connected to the internet, it takes, upon hitting the button on your app, it doesn't even have to be on the same network. As long as your phone is connected to the internet, the frame is connected to the internet somewhere, the process happens in less than one second, and for sure faster than the other smart digital photo frames that we've checked out in the past. So kudos there. Now I think this frame hardware does also have an accelerometer, and that's why the app told us to select the circle for the most important center region, because that's the part that isn't going to move regardless of how you flip the picture, but everything else can be either zoomed in or cropped depending on the orientation that you choose. Now one thing I will say though is that this particular software doesn't allow you to pinch in or interact with the photos, so even though it is a capacitive multi-touch display, you can't kind of pinch in with your fingers. I do think that's something that maybe they could add in the future as a software update. But additional options that you can bring up when you tap on the image, and here's what fit to frame looks like. If you want to display the full image in the portrait orientation, it can still do that. Um, and now if I rotate it to the horizontal, uh, it will still preserve that, but it gives a little bit of a border here. Now in this demo I have a quick video that I want to send over. Let's see if it takes a little bit longer to send. I can tap on it and once again tap on select the correct frame. So it seems like video can be selected for either the full portion or up to 15 seconds. So there is a time limitation which is interesting. So it's kind of in a short burst, uh, almost in a social media like format. You aren't able to send longer videos using the service at the moment. And there we have it. It took about one or two seconds for it to pop over. So slightly slower than photos, which was almost instantaneous, but still quite good. Really the speed is great. Uh, probably thanks to the fact that again, it is limited to a shorter segment of the video. It uh, cuts both videos and photos and stitches them together, which is pretty cool. You can interact with elements on the frame by navigating around and switching into different parts that you want to look at. Uh, video quality is decent, but it is a little bit compressed, uh, not quite as crystal sharp as the images. However, the same story here in terms of the comments that you can leave towards the bottom uh, can still be viewed. I can rotate the display, and we can still have a pretty smooth kind of playback experience. Um, I can also do things like mute or unmute the sound, which is pretty neat. I can also pause the video. Um, although you aren't able to kind of buffer between different parts of the video, you can only resume it. One more comment is you can send up to 10 files at once, so you can select multiple photos or videos and then send them all together if you don't want to do it one at a time. In which case, it will receive them, you'll hear multiple pings, we have uh, new images received, and it will just be kind of displayed down below here and everything is loaded up still very quickly. And once again, a very impressive display for such a low quality photo frame. Um, even though this is a generic one, it all works really well in terms of the responsiveness of the unit here. And if I am satisfied with this, I can also return to the home screen, or the gallery rather, and see all of the ones currently on the frame that were sent today, and by which person, and uh, by what device. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of Framio, mostly focusing on the software, which indeed I think is one of the most polished I've seen yet out of budget digital photo frames. The fact that you can share photos not only from your own device, but basically anyone that has your code is a really neat idea. It makes it a lot more interactive and accessible for family members and friends to share content with each other. Even though video files are going to be restricted to 15 seconds, the quality and the speed of the uploading is really responsive. It's quite seamless. The fact that you can share some comments and emojis is also a nice fun touch that I haven't seen in other frames before, making these low-cost cloud photo frames a lot more useful even if you're on a budget. You can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a closer look at Framio smart photo frame software for low-cost cloud photo frames.